G'day guys, it's Ashton Cartwright here from paidauthor.com. Uh, today I'm uploading a book for one of the authors I've published. And I thought I'd go through the process with you. Uh, so this is to upload it to Amazon through Kindle Direct Publishing, which is kdp.amazon.com. If you haven't used uh, them before, it's very straightforward. Just go to kdp.amazon.com and you can create an account like that. It's completely free. And it's the best way to get your book out there into the world. Uh, so because I already have an account, I'm going to click sign in. Okay, and this is the KDP uh, dashboard or bookshelf, where it has all the details of the various um, books you've published previously. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new Kindle ebook. Um, now this is a previous book we've published by this author called Demon Blessed. It's a paranormal romance. And the book we're uploading today is called Demon Lost, which is the sequel to this one. So we'll click on this Kindle ebook and this will take us to the ebook details page. Uh, now the language is going to be in English as default so we'll leave that as it is. Book title, the book is called Demon Lost. Uh, there's no subtitle, that's more commonly used for non-fiction books. Um, although sometimes there are subtitles for fiction as well. Series information. Now because this is part two of the series, we'll put the title of the series there. And it's number two. Pretty straightforward so far. Uh, edition number, we're going to leave that blank. Primary author. That's the name of the author. And you can, if you have multiple authors, you can add another one here or if you want to add things like editors or photographers or anything like that, you can put them in there. Um, we don't need to do that in there, so I'll keep moving. Description. Okay, so what I'll do is I will pull up the description or the blurb uh, that we've already done previously. So here it is here. So we wrote this up before, so I'm just going to copy and paste that into here. Uh, now, sometimes I've found when you, uh, this little button here drags and it makes it bigger so you can see it a bit better. When you copy and paste into a description field, sometimes it condenses the extra space. So we want plenty of white space between the paragraphs here. So I'm just going to hit enter or carriage return one more time so that it, it looks a bit better when it's finally updated. Okay, so that's that one there. Next step is publishing rights. Uh, we own the copyright for this. Uh, the other button is if it's a public domain work, which is usually if you're uh, taking a very old book that might have gone out of copyright and want to publish it. But if you're writing your own work, this button has no use for you. Uh, keywords. So we're going to put in the keywords. This is basically what the book is about. Normal romance. Uh, there's also werewolves. Uh, it's also contemporary. Actually, I might not put that in. I might just put regular romance in. Uh, there's also ghosts. Um, and we're going to mark it as a series. Alrighty. Looks good, looks good. Actually, you know what we'll put here? Um, Fae, which is the fairies, that's probably more relevant. Uh, now, the next step is the categories. You can put up to two categories for your book, and these are set on the international category system. So these don't always directly match with what Amazon will show on their product page, but you'll find that they'll they'll fit into a category very similar to these. So we're going to look in fiction first. Um, okay, so fairy tales, folk legends, that doesn't sound right. What we're after is cult and supernatural. And here's the romance category. We'll see if there's a fantasy romance. There we go. Fantasy romance is probably a good one. And paranormal romance. But those are the best categories for us. Excellent. Uh, age, age range, we're going to leave all that blank for the time being. 
save and continue. Okay, so it's the first bit done. Now we're going to the Kindle ebook content itself. Uh, first question is for digital rights management. In a nutshell, if you put digital rights management on the Kindle ebook, it makes it a bit harder for people to uh, pirate it, but it does sometimes make it hard for people to send it to friends and lend it to each other and things like that. I always don't bother with digital rights management just because I've found that overall it's better if people can access your book quite easily. Digital rights management can occasionally impact um, people reading on odd or smaller uh, e-readers and things like that that might not be Amazon specific. Um, so we're just going to leave that open so that's fine. Next step here is upload the ebook manuscript. So we're going to upload Demon Lost. Um, now this has already been formatted to work for Kindle. It's just done in MS Word. Um, and there's another video I've got there that shows you how to do that if you haven't done it before. Usually only takes a few moments. There we go, so it's been uploaded, all done, beautiful. Uh, now, Kindle ebook cover. Again, we've previously had someone design our cover for us, so we can upload a cover we already have, which is here, Demon Lost ebook. Um, if you're, unless you're a, a trained graphic designer, it's usually best to get a professional to do your cover. Um, they're not usually all that expensive, depending on how much you're willing to pay for it. Um, most of the covers we use generally don't cost us more than, say, $50 to have someone design. $50 to $100, and you end up with something pretty good looking generally. Uh, I'm not very artistic, so if I was going to try and uh, design a cover myself, I, who knows how it would turn out. Okay, so it's just processing the file. Then we can go through and preview it. Alright, we'll launch the previewer now. So this lets us check to see how the book's going to look for our purposes. Make sure there's no silly errors like, you know, forgotten the first 10 pages or anything like that. And now it says here, it's, it's processing the file. It says it could take several minutes. I found for Kindle it's pretty quick. If you're doing this process for a paperback, it's a, a touch slower, but it shouldn't take too long. And this is a pretty large book. It's about 130,000 uh, words, um, which is definitely on the, the longer end of the scale uh, for, a, for a paranormal romance or for most novels, really. So it might take a, a touch longer than usual. If, uh, if you want to skip ahead to when this is done, I'll give you a thumbs up down here. Oh, there we go. All set. So now it's pulling up the preview. Okay, Demon Lost, Vicky Sex, that's all good. Copyright, and dedication, table of contents. It's all looking good. Um, beautiful. So those are the links to the various chapters. Chapters, excellent. So that all looks fine. This is uh, something you can you can skip to any part of the book. Kindle uses locations as opposed to pages or chapters or words um, because depending on what device you're watching it, reading your book on, it can come up differently. For example, this is a tablet. If we want to see how it looks on a phone, it'll pull it up here. And if we want to see uh, how it looks on a Kindle e-reader, and it'll pull it up like so. Excellent. So that's all fine. So we can go back to book details now. Excellent. So that's all good. I'm going to put my publisher name in here. 
Uh, now the ISBN, in a nutshell, it's a it's an international way of recording each book. They cost money if you want to buy one yourself, so I always just use the free Kindle ISBN. So they'll give us one, and Amazon will pay for it effectively. For me, I've always found that's the way to do it. Um, if you want to publish a book on other sites other than Amazon, that's fine too, because most of the other sites also give you a free ISBN. Um, so I'm I'm a, I'm a firm believer in not having to spend money unless there's a very tangible reason for it. Um, so I don't bother doing that there. I'll just let them give us one. Okay, so now we're actually saving the file. The previous one was just for the preview, so this will take another moment. Then the files to the format. Yeah, the difference between this sort of process for uploading a book for sale across the world compared to the challenge it would have been even five or six years ago. That's just that's just a fantastic improvement. And for for small or independent authors, it's just the best best uh, advancement in technology ever. Okay, now we're going to enroll our book in KDP Select. There's a few benefits and a few restrictions from that. Um, so we'll be exclusively with KDP Select, and the only hindrance that gives us is we can't sell our books on other digital formats now. We can't sell it on Apple iTunes or Google Play or Nook or Barnes & Noble or anything like that. But the benefits we get from being in KDP Select um, in my experience, it certainly outweighs the, the cost of having to have it exclusively there. Uh, one of the benefits is you get to promote the book through Amazon by making it free for five days out of every three months. Uh, or you can use their Kindle countdown deals, which is again, you get to reduce the price of the book for a five day period um, while still maintaining your maximum royalty. Um, and perhaps the most important reason to be in KDP Select at the moment is they have uh, Kindle Unlimited, which is really like Netflix, but for books instead of television shows or movies. And so people can pay $10 a month and read as many books as they want, as long as they're in KDP Select. Um, and then as an author, you get paid about half a cent for every page of yours that people read. Um, for genres like romance, we find probably 80% um, of our income is through Kindle Unlimited. So it's just much better for us to keep everything in Kindle Unlimited so our, our fans can binge read an entire series from us. Um, so that's why we've got this one enrolled in a KDP Select. We're making, uh, so I'll go on to the next one here, which is what territories we have distribution rights for. If you're the author, you've got them for worldwide. Sometimes, uh, for example, I'm a publisher and I might buy the rights to sell a book in only specific countries. Say I've, I bought the rights to sell in Germany or something like that. I can select the individual countries that I have rights for there. All right, so we're going to just select a royalty plan. There's 35% or 70%. Uh, unsurprisingly, 70% is much better than 35% generally. Uh, Amazon has restrictions on when you can claim the 70% though. If your book is priced between uh, $2.99 and $9.99, you're entitled to get the 70%. As you can see here, it must be between $2.99 and $9.99. Otherwise, if you price your book below that, um, you're only entitled to the 35%. Or again, if it's above $10, you're only entitled to the 35%. For, for small or independent authors, I recommend almost always going with the 70% and making your book towards the lower end of the scale. Um, so I'm going to make this $2.99. Almost all of our books are $2.99. Um, the reason is because that's a low enough price that people are willing to take a chance on a new author if they haven't encountered you before. And also it's cheap enough that a fan 
won't have any qualms about buying your book right when it comes out. And again, like I mentioned, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the royalties we make are through Kindle Unlimited, which is for people who aren't actually even paying for the book. So this price doesn't affect them whatsoever. So by pricing it pretty competitively, it means enough people who are paying for the book are buying it, which keeps it high up on the rankings, which again lets more people see it um, to either buy it or read it through Kindle Unlimited. Uh, now this is a matchbook program, which is something that Amazon has. If you are planning on making a paperback for your book, which we are, you can enroll the book in Kindle Matchbook, which means they can get a discounted version of the ebook if they buy the paperback. I generally always do that, and we'll make the, them be able to get the ebook version for free if they buy the paperback. Ordinarily, we make a slightly more profit on a paperback anyway, um, so I'm happy to give them the ebook for free. Uh, next option is book lending. It allows people with their Kindle to lend it to one another. I have no problem with that. I'm always happy for, for someone to say, hey, you should read this new this book by this author I'm a fan of and lend them the book because it's basically more exposure and it's a chance to pick up a new a new fan. Uh, because we're in uh, Kindle Select, it's, uh, let's see here, oh, okay, here we go. When you're using the 70% royalty option, we're required to be in the Kindle Book Lending Library, which is fine for us. All right, and that is it. This is confirming that you have all the rights. Publish your Kindle ebook. And that is it. Uh, so I'll take up to 72 hours to go live. Generally, I find it only takes about 12 to 24 at the most. Um, now it's offering for us to do a paperback. Uh, I'm not going to do that straight away, but I'll do that in another video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that's been of some use to you. My name is Ashton Cartwright, and I'm from paidauthor.com. Thanks very much.